I just wanted to say before we start, it was uh, wonderful to see everyone at the um, Coffee with a Cop this morning under the tent. Uh, it was really, really nice um, turnout. Sharon and Triad and everybody and Sue put on a great, great event with good food. And um, it was great to meet all the police officers and um, hear their histories and uh, going back to where they started and what they're doing here in town and, and in their communities and your towns as well. So it was a really nice event. I saw him for a split second. Oh, there he is. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, how are you guys? Sorry, I'm cool. sorry I'm late. Just been no worries, no problem. Many things going on. Yes, absolutely. Yep. So we could. So what are we doing here? What's we just what's... call call the meeting to order. We've got um. Yeah. We've got an agenda, which is fairly short. Um, since the since the uh, town administrators put together the the the. I don't have the agenda in front of me. I apologize. Is the the job description is the first order of business on the agenda? Is that accurate? That's true. Yes. Um, what I'd be curious to hear one of the town administrators talk about how they put together the 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 job description, if that's fair. Sure. You see, Brian or Jeff, do you want to? Give us an update on what you were working on, and we can go from there. Casey, you're just going to leave me hanging. Casey, you're going to be volunteered, Casey. How come I get volunteered for this? You're so good. <laughs> oh, okay. So Because it's your job just... description. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that was the reason. So let me just preface this with this job description was developed as part of our class comp study and it follows the new format Deerfield will, will be using. Um, what the town administrators did was we got together and had a conversation about what we thought maybe hadn't been included or what we thought could be included mm -hmm. um, just based on just even this transition through COVID. So yeah. What you see is an identification in, in, I don't know if I have it. In yeah, I was going to say, do you want me to try and share it? I could. Um, yeah, I, did I, I sent you the, can you do that, Brian? And, and Casey, I'm I can't, no. Casey, oh, I'm, okay. I'm impressed you have a crystal ball when you say transition through COVID. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, well, it's not done yet, but it's. Like that's my it point. <laughs> that's my point. It should be. Um, let me see. Give me a second. If, I can... if people had vaccinated across the country like they should have originally, then yeah, we would we be having this problem. Right. That's the truth. So the, you're absolutely correct, Jonathan. It's the difficulty here is making it trying to develop not only what we found came out of our class comp study, but also. Um, an identification of where, let me just see if this is it, um, where we thought some of the things that weren't in the old job description could be identified. And I'm trying to find it, it's not making me happy. So give me a sec, I'm gonna send it to myself again. So, so well, and, and I'll editorialize for a second, you guys, that I think one of the things that we need to do in relative conjunction, I don't know what the, what that exact order is. Um, but I, I do think that we need to revisit the MOU to make sure that the MOU is more specific in terms of um, elements that, 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 that may have been determined to be perhaps nebulous. Yep. That's a very thoughtful comment, Jonathan, because we were looking at it. I've been looking at it for a while. And I had questions because it's been a while since I looked at this on a, from an interpretive perspective. And so I thought that might be a useful thing too. All right. Do I have permission to share? Yeah, you should. Do you have it? <sighs> Finally found it. Cool. Thank you. My email is slow. Let me uh, zoom in though. Uh, yeah, can you make that bigger? Thank you.
right? Okay, so these are the essential functions that we thought were a good place to start. So this person really manages all the senior center aspects, indirectly or directly. And by indirectly, I mean supervising somebody who might um, be, for instance, a person that's got a specific task set. Um, it's also a member of the town's management. The, the position is a member of the town's management team because this is a department head in the town of Deerfield. It's not just while we serve all three towns because of the town of Deerfield is a fiduciary. This is a member of our group as well. Yeah. And so this person does more than just overseeing and implementing things. There's a planning element. There's elements of social recreational health, education, financial, all these types of programs are provided through the senior center in various ways. Um, this person can be a referral source for seniors on different issues, financial well-being. Sometimes they do financial programs. I think the program mm -hmm. coordinator works with the director to do stuff like that. This person manages and produces that budget. So it's important that we identify, for instance, that the budget is developed and presented to all three towns, but more specifically to the board of oversight and the finance committees, the select boards, and even town meeting if it's required. Mm -hmm. I don't that I didn't see that as as well parsed through at the old job description I looked at. Um, there's a lot of documentation. I've discovered that. There's a lot of documentation that's required. It's similar to any other department head. The more the state and federal government says, we want to know what's going on, the more reports we create. Brian, can you scroll a little bit, please? Well, Casey, I, I like the fact that we specifically called out that we expect the senior center director to work with specifically Oh, did I just lose him? Tom, can you repeat that? Somehow we just lost his feed, I think, because he's frozen, too. Uh-oh. Yeah, something happened there. Just lost that. So that was actually a conversation the town administrators had, is how do we identify? And we probably don't have all the groups that... that intersect, but we tried to identify a lot of the groups that we're aware of. You know, we get phone calls from all sorts of people. It's not just me, the guys do too. Um, and so we thought it might be useful to sort of identify that the, the intersects are varied. So maybe that answers, I don't know, maybe that goes to Tom's comment. It was about working um, with the Council on Aging Life Path, right. Valley Neighbors, Triad and other groups. I mean, there's, there may be other groups that we don't even know about. So mm -hmm. we tried to be inclusive, but that's why there's other groups that could possibly come and, up. And it should say so that, mm -hmm. that, you know, this is not an exhaustive list, right? Um, but this is a, this is a collaborative position um, that represents the, 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 senior interests of the three towns. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's what it's, that particular item is designed to give, to go there. I mean, one thing about essential functions that I've learned in, in these studies is you can't note everything. What you give yourself in terms of a broad definition is identify the key things that you think are going to be factors in how you supervise a position or how you evaluate a position. And so when the three of us were looking at this initially, there was a lot of recognition that we needed to put certain, you know, we needed to sort of flesh out some of the things that we didn't know whether they were well understood prior to this. Yeah. And it's a yep. good opportunity since we're in the beginning of a, a change in our format to try to capture as much as we can. Yep. And so one thing that we noticed wasn't captured was board of oversight activities. So this person in my past experience, and I'm speaking just for myself, in my past experience, this person um, was 
coordinated the board of oversight's meetings and minutes and you know the activities that were part of the assignments the board of oversight gave uh, in their in their function as you know the operational group you know the 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 management group that oversees the position and the general activities i think we wanted to to identify that and we also that, wanted yes. to identify routine tasks like turnovers and you know phone calls and just stuff that a department head doesn't necessarily it does all the time but it doesn't mm. necessarily get captured i don't know if that's too much detail but i think in our conversation the three town administrators thought that was a useful thing to identify yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here and say the, the I think this is great. The one thing that ordinarily I would not agree with what I'm about to say myself, but I think in this situation I think we need to 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 clearly delineate that this person is responsible for driving, and I want to be careful about our wording here. A, a long range plan for the senior center. Um, I, I think we have, we have talked about this and I have fallen down and I'll say that the entire board of oversight has fallen down as have mm -hmm. many directors about how to fix the problems that we have with the senior center. And I think that we need someone who's a, 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 sort of a visionary and that is not afraid to, 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 to stir the pot and be a, a, a change agent for, we all know that our current situation is not sustainable. Correct. And I think this person really needs to have the mandate of saying, here's what I think we should do. And Board of Oversight, if you don't agree, tell me why why you don't agree. Right. Town of Deerfield, if you don't agree, tell me why you don't agree. Be a good collaborative partner in that. Right. But yes. but I, I know, Trevor, that, again, you can disagree with me if you want, but I don't. we haven't collectively been able to do that. You're right. As a temporary Board of Oversight. Yeah. It's been very difficult with, with the amount of, um, I mean, again, this is, in my select board job is, is a part-time job. And then this is also a part-time job. Exactly. And then um, is I was telling somebody today how much I would love to spend full time doing this stuff, but you, there's just so much pulling at us that um, to have a, um, a director that would really envision what, you know, kind of take our ideas, envision that, mold that into a plan and come back to us and say, this is where I think I heard you want to go, or this is where I would like to take the town to go. And we'll say, yeah, we'd love that. Or let's, let's adjust this little piece here and then let's move forward and, and give that support as much as we can. And then uh, as the board of oversight work with the different departments like finance and things to help explain those um, explain those things that those hurdles that we're going to need that that the direct director would come up against when they're trying to get something financially through or something major passed. We can be the change agents um, because we know how the government works and how we can, you know, move those ideas moving forward together in partnership. Right, and 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 so maybe it's as simple as saying that the senior center needs to be an advocate for the th the seniors from the three towns. Um, to, to ensure that the facilities of the senior center meet the needs of seniors today and in the future or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it can't be, you know, and, and it, it, it needs to look at, at the senior, at, at how, I don't, I, I don't even know how many seniors it is, 3,000, 4,000 seniors in the three towns, not just the the 30 that, that attend to the center on a regular basis, although that's an important mm -hmm. uh, audience, obviously. Right. Um, but, but this person has to drive it. This person needs to be a visionary and, and, and they need to push us to engage on this, but they've got to be the, they've got to be the change agent for what's in the best interest of the seniors moving forward. And, and, and again, I'll, 
put my stake in the ground like I have in the past. The, the current the current building is not does not satisfy that that right. I agree with that. Yes, can I Casey. Ask a question? Sure. Whoever just asked can ask the question. I did have a comment to that, Jonathan. I didn't see, I, I don't see everybody's window, so I don't know who, who asked the question. Oh, it's Liz Foster. I oh, hey, question. Liz. Hey, is it, is that okay if I ask a question? Absolutely, um, sure. In a lot of what I hear you talking about, I wonder what you vision, envision this, the role of the councils on aging, mm. because it seems to me that the council on aging has an equal stake in some ways in in the direction and the, mm -hmm. and really the oversight in some ways of the senior center. Um, th I think that that's a traditional role for the COA in most towns that have active COAs. And so I'm just wondering what you see the COA's role in all of this. Uh, uh, Trevor, I'll jump in and then you can- Please, yeah. Add, um, I think, Liz, my feeling about the role of the, of the COAs is as a partner to the Board of Oversight um, and as a partner to the, to the, mm. to, to the director. Um, and I say that because the unique part about having a three-town senior center with three equal parts is that um, at least historically, this, the COA the COAs did not have equal roles mm -hmm. with the South County Senior Center, or I even forget what it was called in the past before we changed the name. Um, and, and we purposely changed the name just because that COA, func COA function and the relationship didn't work between the three towns. Um, and, and so I see it as the COAs being a, 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 a partner to the Board of Oversight and being an advocate for the seniors, you know, in their respective towns, but also understanding that it is a, a partnership between COAs. Mm -hmm. um, Trevor, go ahead. I'm not, maybe no, I'm not I, explaining myself. No, I, I agree that with that completely. I, I feel like the COAs would really be a, play a very active role in, in helping shape that ideas of and working with this and bringing those information, that information of what the needs are that, that the COAs see to the board of oversight and to the director and kind of us working as a, as a partnership of three um, entities to kind of move our vision forward because, um, and, and we need, you know, really active COAs on, on from all three towns to really not get dominated by one town, but just to kind of really come together. And, and I know that I think you were working at a, at a, at a time you know, before COVID of, um, you know, meeting individually and then meeting as a group and kind of bringing your ideas together. And then, and I think that was really starting really well. Uh, we had that really nice meeting in, in Waitley's Old Town Hall and um, where we talked about kind of the COAs coming together. And, and I think that we were on a really good path and then kind of COVID hit and it's been, everybody's been just kind of back in their corner for a little bit, but I envision that to join together with us to, to take your ideas and because you're, you're much closer to the issue than I am. And, um, and I listen and we'd all work together. Um, so I, I, I see you as a vital partner in this. Hey, hey Liz, I'm curious what your thoughts are. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, well, uh, Having been a member of the COA in the 90s when the senior center was there and we had regular joint meetings of the three town COAs um, that, that the senior center director certainly attended and had input into. Um, you know, we talked prob primarily, I think at that time about programmatic things. Mm -hmm. uh, we weren't in a building, <laughs> building phase or whatever, but um, I mean, it worked pretty well, but I, Trevor's quite right that you need an active, uh, an active COA and a cooperative COA that you know understands that everybody's in it together. Right. Um, so I guess I would I would see their role to just have a good understanding of what's going on at the senior center to be actively yeah. involved in some of these um, job description. Um, items that the senior center director is in charge of mm -hmm. and 
I'll just make one more comment that may not. Sure. <laughs> because that's who I am. <laughs> um, and Let that is that I think this is a very ambitious job description. Uh, I was yeah. a human resources director for 20 something years for um, a fairly large organization. And this is an ambitious um, uh, job description for someone who has constant uh, interruption of, of participants and phones and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and maybe that's part of the planning, hopefully to be able to kind of support um, elevate maybe the senior center director a little bit out of every nuance of the day to day because I don't know that it's really doable I mean and you want to set somebody up for success and and not failure so it's a great point you yeah. know I think that I think this is also going to be an interesting job um, posting yes let me ask you a question to that to that point um sure I've always envisioned that the director has the, certainly in my opinion, has the authority to integrate or not into the, minutia is not the right word, into the, into the nitty gritty of, of the daily world of the senior center. Maybe that's naive on my part that that, that a director, because of the situ because of the the building, et cetera, doesn't have the luxury of hiding if there's a lot going on that needs attention outside of the day to day details. Is is it? So I, I guess if it, again, my my idea of the director would be, you know, if 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 they can't be in the day to day. They just aren't, and they need to make that executive decision. I don't think the board has ever mandated the director be or not be on the floor on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. I think that directors like being on the floor, and so they naturally gravitate towards that. But isn't that sort of the role of the director to say, you know what, I'm a director. I'm not the data. I'm not the you know, I, 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 I need to remove myself once in a while, or am I, do, am I making, am I making sense? You, you are, but, but Jonathan, we don't have that staff. I know. May, so, may I interject? So, so you're, you're, you're asking for, you're asking for a director to, but we're, we, we're looking for a hands-on manager. So I, you, you know, we may, we may have the wrong title, um, but you're you're looking for a hands-on manager. That that's that's what our direct that's what our director does. Not it's it's not it's not a a, a visionary person. Purely a visionary person. Yeah. yeah and, and 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 Tom, where I was, I, I think you had lost your connectivity or something, but. My 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 challenge is that the vision is so important, and and I, I, I think the director needs to have that that vision component. It it it, it you know your your director has to have the ha, has to have a vision, but but I also think that that we we don't put we don't put enough um, um, responsibility on the people that use the center as well, and and I I think. Um, you know, Tre Trevor forwarded a message, uh, an email that he received about uh, people wanting to um, be involved in, in, in finding in finding next director. Jonathan, that's Trevor. That's the easy part of the process. But you you want you want people to be engaged the long term, the long term, the day day to day. You you want you want them to you want them to come in and offer suggestions, and you you want you wanted the director to put the uh, put the uh, 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 groups together so that they have, they can sit down and they can have the, they can have these uh, blue sky exercises like we bring in and, and, you know, put up the easel board and start, I, I, I but, and, and I, I would say that that's probably what we're lacking the most is the day to day input from the actual seniors that, that are, are using the facility. And that's where, that's where we got to start, I think. And I, I don't think you, I, 
personally, if you have people telling you what you want to do, it's probably not the right the right thing. But if you have the right person that guides you to, to guide you to the finish line, that's what we should be looking for. Okay. So, uh, again, Jonathan, I'm, all in. I'm not I'm not being quiet purpose. I'm just taking yeah. it. Yeah. Um, um, Casey, can I just make a comment about the job description? The this is a route. So we did a classification compensation study and we studied this particular position in a fair amount of depth because we think it was underutilized and certainly under underpaid it it came out in our comparison it was an underpaid position so this job description is based on the a compilation of other job descriptions that came out of that study and the director is a department head and coordinates activities for a large group it's for for a number of groups let me rephrase that this is not unlike any other department head's job description. And so it may seem like it's ambitious, but this is not unlike what your town administrators and your public work superintendents are doing. It's just, there's a different discipline or disciplines involved. In my experience, I've gone through more than one of these. And this is similar to what, for instance, the senior center that's collaborative in Shelburne, this job description is similar to what they have. And that's a three town regional senior center as well. And to Liz's point, I can add a, and I don't have real time, but I can add facilitates council on aging activities because that's actually a function in my experience in Ashfield that Ashfield was part of that regional senior center. That was something the director did, coordinated the councils on aging and in their case, the building development because they were working on a new building as well. So she coordinated a lot of that. Now she had part-time staff people. And so maybe that's part of the next conversation mm -hmm. that the Board of Oversight has is how do we create a support staff mechanism that's more effective? Because these are things that senior center directors do, not unlike me. And not unlike Brian and Jeff, it's the staffing um, support mechanism that maybe needs to be addressed in the upcoming budgetary season. Mm -hmm. Just a comment. Well, well hey, Casey, to, to that point, I wonder whether if, if we treated this like a typical nonprofit that you gave volunteers actual job descriptions, we have... and. We have seniors that are eager to have jobs. We have seniors who, who take on jobs and they, and they create their own job descriptions um, and they do a great job of it. And I wonder whether the, the, the overt interaction with the three councils on aging and the overt interaction with and coordination with the different other advocacy organizations around seniors that we the, the director should should provide volunteer responsibilities to the councils on aging to the the different stakeholders um because we are all on this together and and again off the top of my head i don't know what those functions would be but to give them a role and to make people feel like this is a collaborative effort and it's not just a bunch of silos working, you know, sometimes in tandem and sometimes in not. I, I, I don't know, I'm just. Oh, that's a thoughtful approach. I think you have plenty of people in just my experience over the past several years, you have plenty of people in all three towns that are interested in the success of the programs. And so giving mm -hmm. people a job is often a great way to impact the results, the programs. and. I think there's a there's a place for that. I mean, they you know, do so much already, you know. Right. I just think that that's understanding that we do have budget limitations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and and that it it may be an effective addition to this document saying to 
to administer, a, a, a create and administer a, a, a volunteer structure. A, 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 we, actually have, we actually have a volunteer structure. This is Sue. Is that you, Sue? Hey, Sue. Hey, it Sue. is. I've been listening. Is it written down, Sue? Um, it is. I do, I do not know if it's written down within the director's position, so called, but we rely heavily on volunteers all oh, the time. They do so much. Right. Yeah. I, yeah that, and that was sort of my point. But if we wrote it down, if, if we sort of, if, if we had it in as, as the Bible that we could refer to in terms of who's responsible for what, who's doing what. So that right. so that you have you have you know standard operating procedures. Well, the, I think the, that's a great the volunteer, idea. The volunteer call is different on it. A lot of times, it's on a um, as needed basis. Depending um, on the topic. For, for whichever yeah whichever events going on or the day to day, there's yeah. two different sections there. Okay. Um, so actually, I usually ended up coordinating all those. Too. Right, right. Because yeah, and I'm just saying, if we if it was in writing, we would have a reference point, so that you know, and, and if one function was on a monthly basis, because that's what that function was, um, or if it was just a, a volunteer group that was in charge of the of the of the summer, uh, you know, picnic, th that's fine. But so so we just knew which volunteer organizations and or individuals were responsible for different pieces of the ongoing functionality of the senior center that would be under the coa they are uh, they would be wonderful in facilitating this yeah so I what he's what saying help. sue is if there's a development and oversight of volunteers and volunteer programs working in collaboration with the coas because you're right the coas play a large role in that and it's identified it's easy for people to refer back to a structure I think is that that's where Jonathan you're going, right? Yes, that is exactly where I'm going. So I could okay. add that develops and oversees volunteer and volunteer programs with, and I, if you want me to frame it a certain way, just yell at me as we go along. Um, in coordination with key with stakeholders, yeah. with key, key stakeholders stake or with in right, coordination with council on aging. On some and council on aging on others and, well, that's what I mean. That's why I was yeah. saying key stakeholders. Yes, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. What do you guys Don't think? Be... I think that would be good. Okay. Tom, Jonathan, yeah. is that language you can you agree with or not? I I I, I agree with that. I I think the problem is I you know you can you can designate the COA right now. But I, I don't I know we've had trouble in Sunderland um, having a full COA staffed all the time. And and I think if you ask for the membership of COAs in White Lane Deerfield, you have a you'd have a problem coming mm -hmm. up with those names as well. I, I I don't know if you need to specifically identify the COA. Um, but I, I don't I, I, with key stakeholders. I, is key stakeholders. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, again, I, I still think that there's people involved and, and the people that use a senior center or may use a senior center, those are the people that that we need to take ownership of the senior center. We've always tried, and that's why I think we've always tried for since the beginning, is try to get people that use a senior center to, to take ownership of it because they're the ones that have to make, make, make the changes. Mm -hmm. they're, they're the ones that have to drive the programs. They're the ones that need to tell us what they want to do. Oh, by the way, they're talking about petitioning the town. They're going to go sit in the town hall about us. Uh, they've just been talking about um, they want more attention um, for the senior center. Come, come to a meeting. <laughs> We're actually talking about that. We're. I'm trying to. Yeah. There's I a lot of that. activities going on, it's, Sue. It's just it, they can't all happen at once, and that's yeah. the problem. Oh yeah. And, oh yeah. And it's yeah. so hard because you know. John Pachorek, bless his heart, yeah. he tried to mobilize that thing for 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 a needs assessment, and 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 the COG didn't want to pay for it, and it was the priority of the three towns, of all three select boards, it was a priority mm -hmm. to have that needs assessment accomplished. 
and the COG chose not to pay for that needs assessment. Yeah. And the needs assessment is absolutely critical. So, so to that point, we were talking, John and I were actually talking about that. We'd like to get that started and see if we could do something of that in that vein. But I think both towns, did Sunderland and Waitley allocate funding or not? I didn't, I don't think that happened. Deerfield actually allocated some capital money to it mm -hmm. as an aside, but that's the guys and I had talked about that and John and I had talked about it. It, it, it is, it, I don't think we did. Because we were, you know, when we were on TTLA together, yeah. we thought that it was going to be FERCOG. FERCOG. Yeah. And it, and it didn't happen. And, and I'm, obviously I'm frustrated to this day that it didn't happen. Um, so I guess we've got to figure out either how to do it, find pro bono help to do it, or we've got to allocate funds somehow. Yeah. I forget how much we put forward, uh, 25000 or something like that. We put seventeen five towards the survey itself and then twenty five towards feasibility. Okay. Um, but since the – it's changed a little since the COG didn't allocate those funds. Right, right. Maybe we make a change because our, our capital, just so Tom and Jonathan and everyone on the call knows – our capital was a, comb a combination of feasibility, which it follows the survey. So the survey really identifies what services seniors might want in the three towns. The feasibility of, of how to use the center or other structures to provide those services is the secondary piece of it. Um, and I can write an email and see if we can get a, an updated quote. John has a quicker connect with one of the firms that we had talked to. So yeah. okay. we can do that just to and, and and I'm more interested in to know the the, the services because yeah. I don't believe the building is adequate. I don't believe that we have any buildings that are that will adequately um, satisfy the needs of our seniors. And I think that's why once we have a, an understanding of what services seniors are interested in having, then um, we need to figure out how to make that happen. And and maybe we're maybe we're we're overthinking the needs assessment. Again, I, I tried a while back to, and maybe I did it in the wrong way, to just get a, 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 a list of, of services that people wanted to, to have. And I don't think we ever got it, but if we had a list of services that people would like to see on behalf of seniors, then we would know what kind of a, at least the, the, the skeleton of a building. Yep. So Did I'm not we sure. Have a thing in the survey. Say again, I, I talked about the survey that went out before COVID. They went through and asked what the seniors um, would like to see, and um, I, I don't know. I could confusing what? it with you know, Sunderland um, um, when they're built. They're building the senior housing. They were looking for information. I know there was a oh. they had a survey on there. And we had, yeah, we did have something when the, in the town building advisory committee, there was a survey done by, I think, Westfield State uh, or Westfield University or something. Somebody yeah. from down there had come up with uh, something, but I, I'm not sure how targeted it was, but I know it did have something to do with some questions, but we could pull all that together and we got to get moving on something because we can't, we, we just. But we Trevor, and, Trevor and Casey, am, am I? The, the the funding that you guys authorized or appropriated wasn't just for senior assessment or needs assessment. It was, it was for all your town buildings, correct? No, no, we did a specific, we did one for all our town buildings and that's completed. And then we also ponied up some money for specifically senior house, senior, senior center, senior okay. needs, senior needs. And then we're also working on, you know, senior housing as well. Yeah. That, yeah that's a different, right, 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 different, right, right. Yeah. Different thing, but um, yeah. So can I, can I ask, can I just interject one thing? It's Liz again, sorry. Sure, Liz. Um, so uh, I know that um, Life Path has, uh, has always provided money through Title III for nutrition type uh, programs that, you know, you have to um, ask for the money, you have to ask for, you know, and get approved and get the money or whatever. But um, they sent out an email um, 
I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. Sadly, I don't know who this email goes to other than to me and to the senior center director, which since there's no one there, I don't know if anyone's checking the email or not, but um, the area agencies on aging, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. They, the money that came from the feds to mm -hmm. be allocated through Title III of the Older Americans Act what is, is a lot this year because of COVID. Oh. And so Life Path is looking for um, basically input on what are the priorities in the communities and looking for lists. Now they deal with their entire service area, obviously. So it's not just our towns, but right. they're looking for input on, you know, what do you need? What are you looking for? What, you know, what are the things that we can do? And most of those things are not capital items because they don't pay for things like that, but they're programmatic and they're, um, I'm just thinking about what we we're just talking about. They might be able to help fund something like uh, a survey of, I think communication to me is one of our big gaps. And I think yeah. that um, they might be able to put something like that together or we would put it together and they would approve it and, and help pay for it. It's just hmm. a suggestion of possibility. Okay. So um, I guess back to the job description. Are, are we are we good to approve this? To and then um, would we want to move on to the vacancy notice? And so I added a couple things um, just based on your conversation. Mm -hmm. And so would, I added a facilitates council on aging meetings, group activities, and other tasks related to the work of the councils. Mm -hmm. I added. I added. Um, Oh, crud, I saw, I had it in here and I just looked at it. I moved a few things around as well because it sounds to me that, oh, develops and oversees volunteers and volunteer programs with key stakeholders. So it sounds to me some of these things, like we had, for instance, the oversight work, the, the work that the coordination with the board of oversight further down in the bullet list, but I moved it up because okay. it is a key piece of this. It is. So I yep. think is is the facilitation with the Council on Aging meetings. Yeah. But if you know, in the one of the higher bullets, it says advocates and facilitates senior center, senior center building development. And I just want to mm -hmm. draw that to everyone's attention because that was a key outcome of the three town administrators sitting down and discussing this because we have all heard individually and as groups about the building. And mm -hmm. so I've seen a process like that work. It, if it's well thought out and there's intersects with, you know, fundraising arms and other groups, it can be a fairly comprehensive but manageable process. It's just everybody needs to understand the expectation around that. The senior center director doesn't manage it completely. It's a group effort because there's regional um, stakeholders involved as well as the towns that are participating. So, but the reason I said advocates is because that's a key piece of it is that person. And I've heard Jonathan say this more than once, that person works directly in the center and just like Sue Corey does has a direct impact on how services are given as well as how the space is used. So I think that advocation makes, makes sense to add. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I would value Sue's opinion on how things should run there, you know, very highly. And, and, Thank and, you. and, 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 and same with the, um, you know, when the director's there also and the see the people who use it are, I'm not there every day. I don't know how different entities, you know, use it and, so I rely heavily on that, that, you know, that information to us. So it helps us figure out what we really need to do and what we need to build. So for Jonathan. the purposes of, of, of this job description, mm -hmm. um, is there an experience requirement? Yes. To to? Please. So Please. the education and experience we can talk about. So bachelor's degree, and three to and we can adjust this. 
bachelor's degree, three to five years of related experience or any combination, equivalent combination of education, training, and experience. We can reframe that. Um, some, sometimes you have to make a judgment call in a hiring process mm-hmm. to, as to what that equivalent combination is. This is, a, this is actually a basic one for many of the management positions. Not all of them require um, certain degree levels, but in this case, elder services is becoming a much more complex field. So that was initially why we did that. Um, what do you guys, I mean, I would like to keep it within the range of what we would see in other town job descriptions, but definitely tell us what you think. The three of us are, are interested. Experience in grant writing. Mm -hmm. That's identified in the, in the, um, essential functions. Okay. I mean, we can add it, but it actually, you can put that into the vacancy, Sue. And in fact, I don't know if I did, but I thought about it. <laughs> I thought about that. You, you know, I, yeah, it's there. Have grant writing and fundraising skills and be computer. Yeah, I thought I put it in the vacancy notice. Yeah. And, and I would say skills and, and not experience because you can have mm-hmm. the skills and, and, and not have the experience. And yep. I'm okay with that. I, right. I, uh, I sort of uh, am someone who I have no problem hiring someone who's who's who lacks the the experience and i get your point about elder services becoming more and more complex that's that's the fly in the ointment but someone with just an incredible amount of energy who wants to use this as a stepping stone i'm okay with i i don't need someone to be here for 10 years i'm totally okay with someone saying i'm going to come here i'm going to light the world on fire I'm going to make my mark and then I might, yeah, I might take that experience and move on, but we've benefited from that enthusiasm and that, and that, and, and that, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to control, I'm going to run the world. Um, and, and so I, I personally, I do think the bachelor's degree is important. Um, but the, the experience, ah, you know, someone might have the personality to be, to be a manager and they don't have the years of experience, but they just have that je ne sais quoi. And so What's that's that part called? of the hiring process that we sometimes identify, you know, throughout that. You've done that. So, you know, that that's that's a nuance. It's a personality nuance. And that usually comes out as you're going through your search. Right. I, I, just don't wanna, I just don't want to close. I don't want to close doors. That's my my point, Casey. So if we were, I wouldn't normally put that in a job description, but we can frame it into the vacancy notice. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a separation. Let me just um, explain quickly the perspective of a vacancy notice. A vacancy notice gives you a brief on what you can expect the job to look like. The job description gives you a much more fleshed out view. So the vacancy notice, if there are nuances that you would like to see in a person coming into the position, it's often more useful to put it in the vacancy notice because those nuances can off, can be captured better than in just a structured job description because a job description is supposed to be structured for a reason it's a measurement of performance yeah. as well as expectations of the job on the town's part and the employee's part okay yeah i, I guess on my point is I, w- I would go two to four years or something like that you know minimum of two years experience i, I just i don't I don't want to preclude people from, from sniffing around. That's my only point. And what's the salary? So this was just upgraded because we found that our, it was, it was a low in a, in a comparison with other area directors, it was low. So this position, and it has the potential to move, to change in FY23, Deerfield's transition to a new compensation plan is a two-year process. So this position um, is paid, and I would give a range just because I'm more comfortable with a range. It gives you some negotiating. It gives you that negotiating power. I mean, I don't mean power in the sense of like 
oversight, but power in terms of figuring out your best candidates and mm -hmm. the range you can start at, because often you want to start a candidate that maybe, for instance, has two to, two to four years experience, you might start them a little bit lower. And if they come in and they're the go-getter and they get all this stuff done, then you have the ability, you could move their, move their pay rate. But right now the position is 2641 an hour, I think. Hold on a second. I didn't yeah, do the hourly is, is not what I... Times four hour. So work the senior week. center director is a grade four step four is the budgeted amount. Um, next year that would change prospectively because we did identify some things that you know directors normally do and that had maybe hadn't been acknowledged before. So it may be worthwhile. If you make an adjustment in the number of hours, it may give you a little more leeway in the amount of pay. Well, so there's I, a reason that's highlighted. I just did it as 40 hours at 2641 an hour. And that's, that's the equivalent of just, just barely south of $55,000 a year. So what's the range we want to put? Um, I think for this. Please tell me it can be what an annual guys salary. Think? Please tell me it can be an annual salary and not an hourly rate that we advertise. We can do an annual. Yeah. Because this is an exempt position. We use an hourly rate to help develop the budget number. But for an exempt position, you're really looking at salary and benefits. Right. Well, and I don't see my colleagues speaking up here. Where do you think the, the um, I mean, Generally, where would we hire this person on the scale? And I mean, just I, I would just give us a, a quick range. I, I don't have so, a, you know, I don't have it in front of me. So um, I have the scale in front of me. And so this position right now is twenty six forty one, as I mentioned. I yeah. think we start between twenty five thirteen and up to twenty seven sixty six. Now, twenty seven sixty six is not what's budgeted for. But it may mean that at the end of the year, all three towns make an adjustment if we find the candidate that fits within that pay range. In other words, if we find somebody that, you know, fits that perspective that you and Jonathan and Tom as well have sort of mentioned in this conversation and we decide to pay that person a little bit above or we start at 2641 and, and that person blows everybody's socks off and we change it. We may have to do a transfer at the end is all I'm saying. Trevor, I'm going to throw it 50, out there and say 50, the range of 50 to 57. Yeah, I was going to say that too, 54 to 57 or something. No, I'm fine with 50. Well, 50, 50, 50 to 57 is fine. That's good because you, you have some flexibility there yeah. based on their experience and stuff. Yeah. Tom, how do you feel about that? I, I don't I, – I, I think it's fine. It, um, I – I, I think I would be a little less, you know, when you talk to a bachelor's degree, I think we, 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 we may have trouble with finding, and I, I don't want right. to over, I don't want to overemphasize a bachelor's degree. I don't want to overemphasize the, the grant writing also, because, you know, yeah. if we can hire, we can, you can hire people if, if there's grants available or if, if the director if the director identifies grants, you can hire a professional grant writer that that would have a much better chance of getting those grants. And yeah. then usually they take a portion of portion of those grants that they receive. So if you get a thirty thousand dollar grant, they may take five thousand. So yeah. I actually I, you can, um, when you're doing when you're doing the grants, there's also some courses you can take. So you wouldn't have to give up that amount. But um, a lot of the grants are pretty well straightforward um i've i've done a few myself okay um and uh, anybody with a bachelor's degree or any you know similar can um um figure out how to write it um okay. it just takes a little bit of experience and um be able to have good communication skills right and and yeah and, and I, no yeah, matter, I, I, sorry I agree with the communication skills. I, 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 and again, um, some, some, you know, I, you could even, you could, you can, 
Jonathan, you said you could attract someone just starting out or someone that's been in the business for a while. And, and I think we shouldn't be afraid to look for those, those type of people. So yep. for sure. you know, I, now, I, now I, this, this position was just um, turned into a salary position before, correct? Because before it was only like 30, 32 hours. And then all of a sudden, you know, Christina was saying that she was salaried. And I was like, um, well, it's the still, I'm just it's not, it's, it's an exempt position, Sue. It was drafted as an exempt position because oh. that type of oversight is an exempt. It's, it's, you do the work as long as it takes you to do the work. Uh, we still right. have to turn in our payroll sheets, but for clarification purposes, yes, this is qual classified as an exempt position. So salary, quote unquote. <laughs> you, you do the work until it gets done. <laughs> exactly. Okay. That's why you see my car out back so much. Right. Yeah. <laughs> why you see me next door all the time too, mm -hmm. even though oh. I'm not out. <laughs> yeah, we're grateful. And, so, and so, uh, to her point, Sue, can we just take a second and thank Sue? She's been amazing. Yeah. Yes. helping us very, very and she's we're, we're trying to help her as much as possible and we're working pretty closely together but i just want to shout out there for sue she's yeah. been amazing and we appreciate it and all the volunteers that are helping her yeah the, i knew how to applaud on oh. here i would but i i don't know how to <laughs> uh, so hey tom would you be more comfortable if we did an associate's degree instead of bachelor's yes i would i i, I mean you you could you could you can put you can put the, uh, you know, minimum associate and then say preferred bachelor. Yeah, that's but, what I was yeah. going to do. That's fine. So yeah. I can change that to associate's degree in elder affairs or equivalent field with bachelor de bachelor's degree preferred and two to four years of related experience or yeah. any equivalent combination of education, training and experience. How's that? Yeah, Casey, I don't I don't need the degree in elder affairs. OK. Now, is this for, now, are we going to look for 40 hours a week? Or is that what you're looking for, Casey? Um, that's up, you know, uh, I don't know at? what the guys feel like, but okay. it's... We're, we're there I already, aren't we? Yeah, we are. You are. You have a better shot at getting a higher, a wider candidate pool if it's a full time, yeah. which it's turned into we a series of years. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't know if you, if, if you feel considered 40 hours or 37 and a half for a full week. <laughs> Um, it's usually 40, but we have salary exempt employees that work less than that. It depends. The town accountant doesn't work 40 hours a week, but okay. she is an exempt position. That position is exempt. Okay. All right. Um, so, we're, so if, are we good with this? I am. I, yeah, would really I am like too. To Tom, are you okay like with this? Yes, I am. So I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion to, or do I hear a motion to accept this job description and, yep. rep and refer to the town of Deerfield? I just, Sue, you had a comment real quick before we did this. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I, you said that you didn't um, want anything, Jonathan, regarding, you know, they didn't have to be in with elder affairs. Now, it's really important that they have some um, information or knowledge regarding um this elder population because without it um they just um they have to be they have to have that that flair with seniors or or know what their needs are um because if you get somebody that has you know an associates in fine arts or something whatever and has worked at a i don't know something else um of course you know, you'd be reviewing them anyways, but um, th they just wouldn't fit. I mean, they didn't, they wouldn't be able to have the connection to be able to, because the, the senior population is a particular population you have to be able to be able to deal with. Yeah. So me, go ahead, Sue, I'm sorry. It's uh, knowledge. It's actually that I, that's identified knowledge in general um, ability and skills. So. It does say a general appreciation of the aging process yeah. and understanding of the physical and emotional impact of aging. And, and so it does reference it. Okay. Be, be, because, and, and Sue, just so you know, my, where I'm, what I'm thinking when I say this, these things is yeah. that I admit I'm looking for someone who's, who, who can and will think outside the box. Yeah. And I, I want to make sure that we don't, 
get a candidate who just thinks, well, that's the way everyone else does it. Oh, exactly. You, you want some fresh ideas. You want some motivation. Um, exactly. You know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I understand. Yeah, no, and 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 so I'm not. I, I think your thoughts are are spot on. I just want you to know where I'm coming from, and I'm not saying I'm right or wrong. I'm just saying that's that's my thought process. No, that's 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 fine. I just, yeah, it's just I'm worried about you know you have somebody that's not experienced with this population, and um, it 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 just doesn't work when when they can't, you yeah. know, be able to associate with them. I mean, it's wonderful if, you know, if they can do, you know, the grant writing or whatnot, but you still still have to be able to interact, interact with them. Now, I remember I was able to get on the telephone call. I wasn't getting on the conference call before. Um, and when I heard you mention about um, the director having time away, um, I, I've always been there. Um, if the director needed to work on the budget or whatnot, if they were there, and they needed to get something done, there is actually a sign on the door that says knock before entering, or um, they are not to be disturbed when the door is shut. And all the seniors were um, actually are good about that. They know not to disturb the director when they're, you know, have to get certain things done. Um, right. So I've, I've just mentioned that from before, I wasn't able to comment, but. Yeah. They, they do have that they do have that capability okay so do we here have a motion to uh, accept this as as written and, and to make a recommendation to the town do you feel that they that they in all three towns that all three towns post in uh wherever they post uh, so moved second all those in favor by voice vote tom aye trevor aye me, I. All right. What else is on the agenda? So I have a quick question. Um, we have an advert that I, you, as you guys have been talking, I was making some changes to. Um, if you give me a second, I haven't put the pay range in, but one thing that I added to Jonathan's point um, energetic personality with knowledge of elder affairs, social work, or related field preferred strong communication skills, grant writing and fundraising skills and technological proficiency preferred. There's a technology component here mm -hmm. that is related to social media. It's something that um, I don't do every day because I delegate it, but it's really that director now that social media is, is the, a format that we're all participating in it helps get the word out. And so I think that technology proficiency is something that we could comment on in the vacancy notice, because that's your familiarity um, that you'll capture and in, in, you'll capture that familiarity in your candidate pool, probably. Oh, well, you're right, Casey, on that one. I agree. Good. Okay. And I could put strongly recommended for um, the elder affairs and social work and then preferred for the other ones because communication oh. is a key thing. Yep. Yeah. So All I right. think, and then you'll be good to uh, go for advertising. Is that the idea? Well, that's the thing I will put in. So the pay range, let me just clarify the pay range is, is it 50 to 57? Yeah. That's what we had said, Tom. I didn't Oh, you said that yeah. was fine as well. Yeah, that's fine. And I'll put, instead of pay range, I'll put salary range. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what that's going to happen, what you guys need to understand, and I mean Tom and Jonathan and um, the town administrators and everyone, is we have to fit, whoever we hire has to fit on our compensation plan. So when I say range, or when you guys say range, it will, whatever comes out of that in terms yeah. of the hiring salary will fit on that range so we'll you'll see it will be tied to a pay rate yeah and then calculated the way we would for a 40 hour a week person right okay hey i just thought about something because i see it and and, and when i do job descriptions and job postings this is something that i do for better or worse i make it very clear up front in the job description reporting to x mm. that's the question 
Yeah, and that's really the, the issue we need to talk about. And that's really something we should, you know, as you mentioned early on about the um, MOU and how we go about having this person, who, who are they assigned to, who's managing them, that kind of thing. And we, obviously Deerfield does the pay and they are Deerfield employee, but we want to kind of clear that out. So what are your thoughts, Jonathan or Tom? Um, well, I, I want to make sure that, that as a director, they're, we're not saying that they're being managed. They are reporting to a person, but I don't want anyone managing the person um, personally. Uh, because again, Brian doesn't manage our highway guy. The highway right. guy reports to Brian. Of but, course, you know. Yep. Yeah, um, we're all. I, I guess, you know, I would like um, to say to I'd like to keep it to the to how we had it before the the town administrator of the of the chair of the boo. That being said, I'm not sure that works that well. I I, I, I think, think that. I just think that I think it adds adds uh, adds confusion, mm -hmm. and I'd rather see the chair of the boo working with a Deerfield town administrator versus the yeah. rector working with another two different town administrators. And and with that being said, though, I think the the synergy that the three town administrators have right now is phenomenal, and I think they work as a team very well and and keep everybody in the loop and you know everyone's kind of on 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 together on a team when it when it's related to anything with the three towns and um so i do i, I think it would be for simplicity's sake and management not management as, as you were talking about reporting to if it worked through the town administrator in deerfield with the chair of the boo um you know so that so you had you had the chair of whoever's the chair of that board, you know, another town kind of working with our town administrator, but, but really requested that our town administrator keep, keep the other two towns in the loop and work together as a team on this stuff. Cause they've done, it done very well. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And then when we do go around to, to, to dealing with the MOU, I, I think it should. And again, this is just for, for, for politics purposes. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think that because the director will be reporting to the town administrator mm -hmm. in Deerfield and hopefully we'll develop good working relationships with, with the town administrators of Sunderland and Waitley as well, that yep. the chair really should always be from either Sunderland or, or, or Waitley. Uh, I, I'm okay with that. Completely. Yeah, and I know you would be because I, you know, I would just soon give this to, to Tom right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look, look, just just so I'm going to put something out there, and I, I hope neither neither one of you gets offended by what I'm going to say. Oh, but, already. Well, son, <laughs> son, I, I, I've been working with Jeff, and, and I'm looking for uh, a place to build a senior center. Right. Uh, and 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 I, I just think that in and, and I, I just think that we know the limitations of where we are right now. And I, I know yep. we can't here. And, and, and I don't think Trevor, this is, this is not, but I, I think we have, we, I agree with you completely. I'm, I'm behind you hundred percent. Trevor, you know what I'm saying, right? I do and, completely. Yep. And, 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 and I, I don't know if it's possible, but I have, a, I have a particular location in, in mind and, and Jeff is, Jeff is going to be on vacation right. next, but when he comes back, he he will he will start talk, making those conversations and see and see if there's something that we can do. I because right now we we have to you know yeah. I, I I don't think we need something the size of Irving. I mean Irving's right. a, a all, but boy we have to do something and 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 yeah. we all I think we all agree. I don't think oh, we completely agree. completely I completely agree. And Tom, and, and, and Tom if, honestly, if, if you have this have this energy to do it. I, I I would be I would give you a big hug right now if you wanted to take over the chair of the boo. <laughs> Jonathan, I don't have one step I don't time. have a problem with that. Let, let's talk about it next month, okay? Right. Or our next meeting. All right. that, Good. That, that's um, but I, I really I and, and again, guy, I really you know, Trevor, and I don't think there's been a bigger proponent of staying in Deerfield than I have, along with, with the president. Yeah. 
but right now, I, I mean, you, you guys have, you have your, your things that, that are important that, and not to say seniors aren't important, it's don't consider them important, but for us right now, it's, 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 it's a good time to, to see if we can make a move, especially with our senior housing coming online next year. Yep. Yep. So, and, no, I, I hear and, you. Okay. So we'll talk about that with the MOU. Go ahead, Casey. I was going to say, um, I do see one place I could make a change, but here's the, based on the last few comments in the supervision received on the job description, you want it to say reports. So it could say reports to the designated town administrator and the chair of the board of oversight, or do you want it to say reports to the Deerfield town administrator and chair of the board of oversight? Because you That's want fine. it to say reports. Jonathan doesn't like the word report, so come well, up with a. I'm, I'm I'm thinking about the whether it it it's, it it adds complexity and confusion, but I understand why it needs to be in there as well. It said supervised before, that's why I changed it yeah. to reports. No, I don't. I, I I don't. I don't mind the word report. I don't like the word managed. Um, in the in the in this context, Th that's fine. Have it be both or Jeff. Yeah, you're muted. The assigned town administrator versus Deerfield town administrator. Yeah. And I, if, if, that, if that's the question, I mean, I, I think assigned would be easier just in, in the awful circumstance that, that Casey didn't yeah. work in Deerfield anymore. I mean, then right. it would fall to the assistant town administrator who probably has a lot of stuff and it might be easier to just say, hey, we're going to switch the assignment to Brian or Jeff until Deerfield is a new person. Yeah. So that's something I don't know. <laughs> No, I think no. that's great. <laughs> no, but I, you know. no, I, I agree with you completely. Assign because because this board of oversight can always take a vote to switch where, where that person reports and um, depending on the load or whatever's going on. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay, so I changed it to assigned. In terms of the vacancy notice, those, those um, applications need to come to somebody and Deerfield's the hiring group. Yeah. So I have right. myself in there, but if Correct. you guys want to have a conversation about that, go ahead and have at it. No, it's all it's all you, and then you can disseminate. Yeah. Okay. Thank now, you. you also need to talk about the hiring process a bit, because <laughs> the way I've done hiring processes in the past is, in this case, this is a department head. So I would recommend to the select board that we do a search committee that goes through the initial hiring process and then, or the initial search and interview and then the candidates that are finalists get publicized. And the and I was thinking this way, the guys can chime in and say whether they like this or not. I don't, it's not up to me. I'm just giving you my thoughts. But the finalists then get publicized and the boo and the select board does the interviews or you, because there's a confidentiality element here for any candidate that we have to maintain but we also need to do a process. So I'm just curious how the boo feels about that. I will say one thing, and I had this conversation with Trevor yesterday. It's not necessarily the most clear cut thing if a member of the boo is on the search committee, because at some point the boo has to make a decision. So it, it can create an exposure later on that could be problematic if somebody had a question about the process. I personally think it should be councils on aging and, 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 you know, probably you Casey or the councils on aging and the three TAs or, or something. I have no problem not having the board of oversight as part of the initial. Yeah. I mean, I okay. personally would like to see, I'd like the act, opportunity to see the resumes, but I don't need to be part of the initial screening. And so the thing about having too many people at the table is it's difficult to actually do the interview process. Yeah. My suggestion yeah. would be a member, a designated member of each council on aging. Right. And exactly. I'm not trying to cut people out of the process. No. I'm simply that, saying that makes sense. From a from yeah. a facilitation Management. perspective, too many right. people at the table is often intimidating and it's hard to to coordinate. Schedule. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's fun. And then and then you would bring the and then we would have a joint board of board of oversight, board of uh, select board meeting hear the interviews together of your finalists and make a decision that night. 
or and so my or, suggestion or would be the next. three town administrators and a member mm -hmm. of each council on aging yep. to do yep. to be the search to do the search yep and then present candidates and this is what the guys and I talked about yep and present candidates for finalist candidates to the boo like you just said to the boo yep. and to the select board and the reason we thought it might be better to do a joint meeting is everybody's at the same table right. and you can ask the structured questions. Cause we would provide yeah. you, you know, structured questions. Mm -hmm. You can certainly give us things that you want us included individually to either the three of us to help yep. get you to your questions for a finalist interview. But I thought it might be useful if the, the six of you could sit in this or the five of you could sit in the same room and sort of be a part of that. Cause then you get a flavor for, for, what the finalists, who the finalists are. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Sounds great. Well, I just, I just hope we have that many. Uh, I, I just hope yes. we have that problem with how they <laughs> exactly. have, haven't had that problem. Right. That's true. That's right. True. We would be starting higher at a higher pay, and it yes, is a right. complex job description. But it's a yeah. department head, and you're running a regional senior center, so I would expect it to be a little more complex. I, yeah. I, I, I hope we find someone who really says, you know gets excited about the prospects of, I mm -hmm. mean, oh my goodness, this is a challenge. Let me, let me have at it. Yep. But I, maybe I'm unique. I don't know. No, you're okay, John. I, I, I don't disagree with you. I, in, in case he's right. I mean, you know, the job really went from kind of a full-time part-time job to a full, a really a truly a full-time position. So it, it is a totally different job in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you guys will go forth and multiply? Yes. Yeah. So I will give this to the select board just so they can bless the process, yeah. you know, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, yes. And maybe I can ask Jeff or Brian to sort of tweak the vacancy notice so it's a little bit more energetic itself. Uh-huh. <laughs> Assigning work. <laughs> oh, look at me trying to get help. They're, they're great, I got to say. They, they have been so Very helpful good. going through this whole developing of the job description and tweaking good. and stuff. So thanks guys. Can I, can I just add something? Yes. Um, I, I was, I, I guess I've been made aware of, of there's some public sentiment that they're, that they're, that they might want to have some involvement in whether it's a screening process or the hiring process. Um, is there any way that we can involve folks from different towns? Maybe it's, uh, I mean, sometimes we see like meet and greets, um, for, we've seen those for town administrator interviews. I mean, how mm -hmm. are we gonna how are we gonna address that sort of that sentiment that 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 senior center members might want more involvement or the opportunity to meet these people and interact with them before before a hiring decision is made? We we did that two hires ago, was it? We did it yeah, two and three hours hires ago, I think. We 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 no, we've done it a couple times, Jonathan. Right. Like, that's oh. what I said, two two and three times ago. Yeah. Yeah. And was it was it productive the, the, and useful? The, the problem, Brian, is that with COVID now, I mean, we don't know. And plus, we don't have a facility yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Under the... <laughs> yeah. Know. Bring your own grill. That's right. There you go. I well, don't see why you I couldn't have do. a meet and greet, but you got to do it at the finalist stage because there's a confidential yeah, element. Yeah. And, and, and leave that and up to you guys if you want to do that. If we get it done in the next couple of months, we can do it under the tent. Mm -hmm. I hope we're done in the next couple of months, Sean. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. Yeah, I, I would leave that up to you guys as you meet and kind of. I would, I would really, really do. appreciate it. I would really, really appreciate it if it didn't take too many months. <laughs> we hear you. you, you I, I, I've, been, I've been through this four <laughs> times. Four yep. times now, so um, isn't it five, Sue? I, I was no, thinking it was five. Also, I I must be missing somebody in there. So, no, Lisa, uh, Lisa, Lisa. Uh, no, Lisa. Yeah, was Lisa was right before Mary. Yeah, Lisa was before Mary, and Mary was there, and then Mary retired, and then Diana Damon, and then Marlene Johnson, now Christina Johnson. Yeah, so it's five. Yeah. It's coming up on five. We're missing somebody too. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yes. that's five. Anyway. No, I no, Lisa wasn't there when I when I was hired. Oh, she wasn't. Oh, I see. Yeah, oh, she wasn't. Oh, she there. left. I see. Okay. No. She, uh, Lisa Mary, was great. Mary and then Mary Mary was there and then Mary uh retired. Yeah. Lisa was great. So yes. 
I still talk to Lisa. I still talk to her. And um, actually, once Mary left, I call, I actually, she helped me out on a couple of things to do. So I um, actually grew up with her. So. Okay. All right. Well, so thank are you we good? You guys? Doing. Yeah, I'm all set. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion, John. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Trevor. Tom? Aye. Yeah. Me, aye. aye. Okay, you guys, thank you so much. Thank you, for Jeff, and meeting. Brian, and Casey, and everybody, and thank yeah. you for joining. TAs, so, thank you so much. Yes. We'll Sue, thank you for your input. Yep. Thanks. All right. Bye. Take care.